Hello everyone. One of the going concerns in plant biotechnology is the matter of containment of transgenes in the field. This concern arises from the fact that genetically modified crop plants may disseminate transgenes. A number of strategies have been devised to reduce or eliminate this possibility. Among these is the approach of placing transgenes in the chloroplast genome of a recipient crop plant. In this module, we will study more about the methods of chloroplast transformation. The learning objectives for this module are plastered genome and genomics, chloroplast transformation technology, advantages of plastered transformation, manipulation of agricultural traits through transplastomic approach. Plastids are double membrane bound organelles found in green algae and most cell types of plants. Depending on cell and tissue type, plastids are specialized for the synthesis and accumulation of various metabolites. Chloroplast is a site of photosynthetic activity and is surrounded by two membranes, the outer one being a product of the plant membrane, while the inner one is derived from the ancestral pro prokaryotic plasma membrane. Chloroplasts are though to have evolved as a result of endosymbiosis between a host eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic organism, most likely a cyanobacterium. They have their own genome and protein synthesis machinery, both of which have typical prokaryotic features. The chloroplast genome is double-stranded circular DNA that is about 150 to 200 kb in size. The chloroplast genome is present in multiple copies in a single chloroplast and a leaf cell may have approximately 10,000 copies of chloroplast DNA. Chloroplast genomes are highly conserved and show very little recombination. A typical genome consists of two large inverted repeat regions of about 22 kilobase pairs each, which are separated from one another by a large single copy region and a small single copy region. The chloroplast genomes code for about 150 genes, which include genes coding for proteins that form a part of the photosynthetic light reaction complexes. Proteins that form the large subunit complex of ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase or rubisco and RNA and proteins involved in transcription and translation, namely RNA polymerase, tRNAs and ribosomes. Biolistic approach is most popular in chloroplast transformation. E. coli plasmids in which a selectable marker gene and the gene of interest are introduced into chloroplasts of detached leaves using the biolistic method. The leaf is then cut into pieces and grown on a regeneration medium containing the appropriate antibiotic depending on the selectable marker used. After two rounds of selection, the regenerated plants are transplastomic with the gene of interest inserted in the plaster genomes. The vectors used for chloroplast transformation consist of flanking sequences that are homologous to different loci of the chloroplast genome. The selectable marker gene and the gene of interest are cloned within these flanking sequences. Each gene has a promoter, a 5 prime UTR and a 3 prime UTR which are chloroplast regulatory elements. The selectable marker genes include NPT2 or AADA genes that confer antibiotic resistance due to which untransformed cells are bleached while transformed sectors are green and form shoots so that they are readily recognized. Instead of antibiotic resistant genes which are harmful to chloroplast function, less hazardous markers can be used. For example, the betine aldehyde dehydrogenase gene this enzyme is present only in chloroplast of a few plant species and the selection process involves the conversion of toxic betine aldehyde. Added in the selection medium by the chloroplast BADH enzyme to non-toxic glycine betine. Rapid regeneration of chloroplast transgenic plants occurred under BA selection than under antibiotic selection. Insertion of the gene of interest and the selectable marker occurs through homologous recombination taking place at the flanking sequences. Double recombination is required to insert only the desired sequence and not the entire vector. The selectable marker genes are dominant markers which are important in selection of transformants in the polyploid plastome. 
since they have an effect at early stages during selection even though they may only be present in a minority of the plastomes. With so many plastid genomes in a plastid and so many plastids in a cell, it is important to select for transplastomic cells that have only recombinant plastids. This is achieved by subjecting the cells to repeated selection such that the non-transformed plastids are not able to multiply and are hence lost from the plastid populations in cells. About two rounds of selection are sufficient to get homoplasmic cells carrying only the transformed plastids. The selectable marker plays an important role in achieving homoplasmy. While the selectable marker is very important for selection of homoplasmic regenerating plants, presence of the marker may affect plastid function or may not be permissible under regulations concerning transgenic plants. Hence, methods have been developed for their removal. Homologous recombination between two direct repeats Engineer to flank a selectable marker leads to marker removal under non-selective growth conditions. Another strategy to eliminate selectable marker genes involves using the CRE lock site specific recombination system. The selectable marker gene is flanked by lock sites which are cut by expressing the CRE protein from the nucleus. Transplastomic plants have several advantages over nuclear transgenics. These are high transgene expression. Owing to the polyploidy nature of the plastid genome, it ensures high tissue specific transgene expression and foreign protein accumulation, approximately 5 to 25 percent of total soluble protein, and also high stability of transgene. Transgene stacking is possible because of polycystronic translation mechanism. The position effect is not seen because of the absence of high order chromatin structure in plastid DNA and transgene integration by homologous recombination process. The homologous recombination mediated integration also facilitates generation of only one type of transplastome. Gene silencing is not seen because of the absence of DNA methylation and epigenetic gene silencing or co-suppression in plastid genes. Transgene containment is possible due to maternal transmission of plastid genes resulting in less ecological risk caused by spread of the transgene through pollen. The module can be summarized as plastids can be transformed using the biolistic method with plasmid vectors carrying the gene of interest and the selectable marker. The genes are expressed using prokaryotic regulatory sequences and are flanked by sequences that are homologous to some plastid genome sequences. Insertion of the gene of interest and the selectable marker gene arises due to homologous recombination. Due to the polyploid nature of plastid genome, several rounds of selection are required to attain homoplasmic plants. However, the selectable marker genes need to be excised and this is achieved by marker excision strategies like homologous or site-specific recombination. Plastid transformation has several advantages over transformation of the nuclear genome since high levels of recombinant protein can be produced. Containment of the transgenes is possible and because of the absence of gene silencing. However, this technology has not yet been applied so far for improvement of agronomic traits in any crop plant. Thank you.